Okay, everything's rolling. I'll cut out all that. Okay. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, blackmail time. <laughs> That's okay, I was in on it. <laughs> well, no, it was a good way for me to test the microphone. <laughs> Oh, wait, let me turn this around so we can see. Well, I think... Okay, wait, which way do you need to... <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, go that way a smidge. Okay, keep going. Okay, perfect, that works. Okay, all right, you ready? I guess so. Okay. No blackmail. Nope. <laughs> Hey everyone, Teresa Sigmund here, and you are in the right place to learn to choose, alter, or make the dance and skate dress of your dreams. Now, in today's training video, I have with me the lovely Marlene. You might recognize her from a different video where we had a black and a white ball gown that she agreed to model for me. So this dress has a really interesting history. <laughs> now, it started off as a rather boring store-bought dress and just, you know, an over-the-shoulder wide tank, nothing super interesting about it. However, what was great about it, which made me buy several of these dresses and then change them, was that it had this great ruffle and these built-in gathers. So on Marlene's dress, this is the second incarnation of that dress. The first dress, we gathered up one side. We went in and I changed out this green, came in and added a little accent splash of fabric. I just applique on top of it, made it off the shoulder, and added this green band over here and then just sprinkled it with several different colors of green. We've got olivine, green tourmaline, some peridot AB, just a whole bunch of greens to tie it in. And what we did in the process was created a really beautiful asymmetrical neckline, made some matching bracelets to go with it, and we pretty much just kept the skirt as it was for the first incarnation. And that was how many years ago, you think? Maybe six? I think so. Yeah, I so everybody gets tired of a dress, right? <laughs> and so we decided it has really great bones and a whole lot of stoning on it. So this is the latest incarnation. We added a sleeve. We're still keeping the same bracelets, still kept the same rhinestoning everywhere, and kept this, of course, because it's super cool. So where we had originally done gathers at the front and the back to make that a little skinny over the shoulder strap, I let that all out, added a sleeve, rhinestone it to match, and we added a skirt, which is really fun. So she has a completely different looking dress now. Tons of volume. Would you mind taking a couple twirls, if you can, on the carpet? So she has tons of movement, and she's really not even moving all that much now, because <laughs> who can spin on carpet? But there is so much movement here. So let's go through and just break down what works on this dress, and that way you can choose whether or not you want to do it on your dress. A couple of things. We have asymmetrical necklines are very forgiving on most figures. Um, Marlene has scoliosis, so she has a particularly asymmetrical figure, but this camouflages it beautifully, especially now that we've made the changes. And so asymmetrical necklines really are a great way to, one, camouflage our naturally occurring asymmetries, and many of us have something that's asymmetrical, arm length, leg length, you know, uh, breast size, thigh size, it, we all have something. But with this asymmetrical, you'll notice that we've got a really nice dramatic line that goes here, which makes you want to draw the eye up. And even though this is where the sparkle is, for in this particular setting, this is where your eye goes. Now, if she were dancing in a dark ballroom, this would fade into the background a little bit and the rhinestone side then becomes the focal point because it would stand out against a darker room. This ruffle here, which is super fun, is really lengthening and slimming. And this came with the, the regular store-bought dress. The gathers here, the ruching, is a really great way to um, camouflage fluff. <laughs> I mean, because most of us have little fluffy stuff that we want to camouflage. This does. <laughs> Love it. Marlene is so fun and she's a really awesome cook and a, and a baker and a beautiful dancer. Um, so 
with fluff. <laughs> with fluff. We have, most of us have fluff. So the gathers really help camouflage that. Go ahead and rotate, please, ma'am. Now, we went ahead and kept this shape right here because this little bit of leg showing is really fun as she spins. She's going to have a lot, a lot more legs showing, but it gives her a sexy look without being nearly as revealed as she used to be. Keep going. Back is the same. It's literally the exact same neckline, front and back. Keep going. One more quarter turn, please. And over here, I actually, whereas it used to be a straight across mini skirt, I angled the skirt up and you could go up whatever high is most flattering on you. As we were fitting it, we just kept going. Okay, well, wh what angle do we like? How high up do we want to go that looks good on her leg shape? You could, another option, Marlene wanted to have this closed so that she had less thigh showing, but if you want more, sh more thigh showing, you would just leave a seam open right here instead of closing it, and then you would have leg showing on both. So that is it. This is the second incarnation of this dress. And I hope you have gotten some really awesome tips that will help you choose, design, or alter a dress of your dreams. And if you would, leave me a comment below telling me what's your favorite part of the dress. Is it the accent rhinestoning? Is it the flared skirt and how it mimics the ruffle on the body? Is it the ruching? What's your favorite part of this dress? And be sure to tell all your dancing, skating, sewing friends. If you have not already signed up to receive the blog, please go to sewlikeapro.com, leave your name and email address, and I'll make sure you get notified every time one of these training videos comes out. That's it. Thanks so much, and I will see you again another time.